Hey, what's up guys? Thank you for joining me for our video today. We're going to be talking about type nines and we're going to be talking about nines and healthy boundaries. And I don't think this is just a discussion for nines. I think a lot of us struggle with having good boundaries, but we're following along in Beatrice Chestnut and Uranio Paez's book, uh, Enneagram Guide to Waking Up. And she talks about several key patterns about type nines. And she brings it up, boundaries, so we're going to talk about it. Just a reminder, on my website, TomLahue.com, you can book Enneagram coaching appointments. I meet with people all over the world, talk about their life and how to get unstuck and what healthy looks like for your type and relationships. And I've just been so blessed to meet so many fantastic people. Also on my website is information about the certificate classes that I offer in, in Enneagram-related things and Enneagram coaching. And I've started offering on-demand classes, so check those out. Those are classes that you can do at any time. Most of my classes are live on Zoom, but now I'm branching out and creating a bunch of classes that'll be available for you whenever you want to take them. Um, so let's get started here and uh, let's talk about um, boundaries. Now, I know that as a seven, I have my own boundary issues. My wife's a two and she has some boundary issues too. Um, I've got a daughter who's a nine wing one. We have five kids, if you didn't know. I've got one daughter who's an eight wing seven, and she's got really good boundaries, believe me. And my son, who's a five, has really good boundaries. It's kind of like hardwired into their personality, especially the five. Um, eights tend to have good boundaries um, in their expectations of what people demand on them. They may sometimes steamroll over other people's boundaries, but they have really good boundaries for themselves. Uh, we've got a daughter who's a four, and we've got a daughter who is a six wing seven. Uh, so, but let's bring it back to nines, okay, and talk about boundaries. Uh, this is what she says. Let's let's take what she says, and then let's kind of branch off in our own direction here. Okay, so she says difficulty establishing boundaries, um, and you might even wonder, like, what do you mean by boundaries? Well, think of a boundary as a fence. Um, it's it's. If you ever read the book Boundaries by John Cloud and Henry Townsend, I'd recommend it. It's very Christian, so if that bothers you, then maybe you don't want that book. Maybe pick up a book like The Disease to Please by Harriet Breaker. Uh, that is a fantastic book also on boundaries. But if you think about boundaries, think about it as a fence that protects the good inside your yard and keeps out other people's stuff uh, and shows a line of delineation, like here's where I start and uh, here's where I end, and then here's where you start. And you need to take responsibility for your stuff and I'll take responsibility for my stuff. I'll take responsibility for my wants, my dreams, my needs, my voice. Um, I'll take responsibility for my feelings, but I expect you to take responsibility for your wants and your needs and your feelings. And sometimes when these boundaries aren't clear, uh, we might find ourselves feeling responsible for other people's stuff, um, you know, being manipulated by other people, and maybe being lazy and letting other people take responsibility for our stuff and not really owning our own voice and not really owning our own dreams. And can you see how this is starting to line up with nine stuff? So we want to be aware that boundaries are a good thing. It might feel like a bad thing. It might feel like, wow, that seems kind of rude. Like I'd have to tell people no. <laughs> no is a great boundary word. So it's a great place to start. If you're really struggling with boundaries or you don't understand the concept very well, just start with that word no. Start trying to say no to people and see how it feels. Exercise your right to say no. You have the right to look at somebody, listen to their request and say, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't really, I'm not gonna be able to help you out with that. And you might think to yourself, yeah, but I need a good reason. I've gotta have a good reason to tell somebody no. Well, the good reason that lives underneath the surface is, I don't want to. 
realize that is a good enough reason for almost everything. I don't want to do it. I don't want to participate. I don't want to be in charge of your thing. I don't want to attend your thing. I don't want to be responsible for helping you out in this way. Just you deciding, I don't want to do this, is enough most of the time for you to give the answer, yeah, sorry, I'm not going to be able to help you out with that. You might already start to feel the panic button hitting, like you're moving to six, like, uh-oh, well, what if they get upset with me? Well, again, their feelings are in their yard, and they have the right to get upset with you. You can't make somebody not be upset with you, and you're not responsible for how they feel about you. Yeah, but I want everybody to be okay. Okay, and that's great. It's good that you want everybody to be okay, but you know your primary responsibility is to make sure that you yourself are okay. You've got to own your own space, own your own voice, own your own feelings, and if something's going in a way in your life that you don't like it, then you have the responsibility to stand up and say, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore, or I don't, I don't, I don't want to participate in this. Think of it like this. That eight wing is right next to you saying, listen, you're a person. You have a right to say no. You have a right to own your schedule. You have a right to own your space. And if you don't want to do something, just look at the person and say, I'm sorry, I don't want to do it. Okay, I'm not saying it's easy. It could be difficult. It can be very difficult to do this. But, you know, the Enneagram isn't here to make you feel better about yourself. It's here to kind of help you see what growth would look like for you. Now, admittedly, if you're a nine wing eight, you might have a little bit advantage in boundaries. If you're a nine wing eight, it's probably a little bit easier for you to say no to people than it is if you're a nine wing one. Um, you know, that eight wing of yours is really handy in, in being able to occupy your own space and tell people no. So I think some delineation needs to be made here between nine wing ones and nine wing eights. If you're a nine wing one, you need to understand this information and you need to start applying it to your life or at least begin asking yourself, do I have good boundaries? And what would it look like if I did have better boundaries? You know, there's an old saying, if the goats are in your garden, don't blame the goats. Goats are goats. Goats will do what goats do. Blame your fence. Your fence is the problem. And so if you feel like there's a lot of goats in your life, just constantly like eating away at you, eating away at your time, eating away at your energy, eating away at your peace in life, if there's a lot of people in your life that just kind of like are wandering in and taking over and setting up their business right in the middle of your living room, um, you know, People will do what they're allowed to get away with. They shouldn't do it, but people will. They'll do what they're allowed to get away with. And sometimes it's the people right there in your own family you love the most that can be sometimes the most exhausting. So if there's a lot of goats in your garden, look at your fence. What's wrong with your fence? And your fence, you know, the very first, the very first board that needs to be in your fence is the word no. Is say, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to do this. Yeah, but I'll have to give them a good reason. I'll have to, look, look at what happens with you as nines. I need to give them a reason that is bigger than me. I need to give them a reason like, well, I'd love to be able to help you, but nuclear bombs just fell from the sky and there's nothing I can do about nuclear bombs. And so you've got this, you've got this kind of wiring that says, just my desires or my wants isn't a big enough reason. Now, if you've never thought about that before, that's going to be a painful thought. I mean, realize other types don't necessarily think this way. They think, I don't want to do it, so I'm not doing it. And you know these people because you've asked them to help you before, and they just said no, and they didn't give a reason. But your wiring kind of says, well, if I'm going to say no to somebody, that has to be because there's a big legitimate reason that's bigger than me. Well, I'd love to, but, you know, tuberculosis outbreak. Hey, what am I going to do? Tuberculosis. And it feels like I have to be able to point to some big reason that nobody could argue with. And you don't. You just have to say, no, I'm sorry. I'd love to help you, but this is just not a good weekend for me. Well, then what if they say, why? Why? Why can't you help? Why? Well, you don't have to answer that. You might feel like you have to answer it, but you don't have to answer it. You could answer it by just repeating the same statement again. Hey, thank you for understanding, but it's really just not going to work out for me, and I really appreciate you understanding me right now. Well, what if they still don't? Okay, well, then they're telling you this is not a person that maybe you ought to continue on with in your life. Maybe this is a person who doesn't respect your boundaries. 
And this is why, you know, like all your life, you've probably had people tell you, why are you friends with this girl? Why are you friends with this guy? They're not really your friend. And you think, oh no, they're fine. Okay, start saying no to them and see how they respond to you. And you might find that they don't respect your no. Do you really want to be friends with somebody who doesn't respect your no? Okay, let me just turn it around on you. If the other person, if the shoe, if the roles were reversed, if the shoes were on the other foot and you were asking someone to help you with something and they responded to you by saying, well, Sam, I'd love to be able to help you, but it's just not going to be a good weekend for me. Thank you for understanding. Would you then say, well, why? Why? Why can't you help me? Oh my goodness, I need you. What's the reason? What's the reason? Would you do that? No, you wouldn't do that. Why? Because I know you as a nine. You're not going to do that. And you know why you're not going to do that? You won't say it out loud, but I'll say it out loud. You won't do that because it's not the right thing to do. You don't do that to other people. And when people are doing that to you, how come you don't recognize that they shouldn't be doing this to you? All you think is, oh, panic. I need to come up with a bigger reason than I don't want to do it. Oh, there's a nuclear bomb. There's tuberculosis. When somebody's doing that to you, when they're pushing on your boundaries and pushing on your boundaries and pushing on your boundaries, recognize what they're doing. And instead of feeling like you need to give in to that, ask yourself, would I do this to them? No, you wouldn't do this to them because it's not the right thing to do. And you wouldn't do it to them. So why are you allowing them to do it to you? Because you have a boundary problem. <laughs> That'd been a great place to end the video. Like drop the mic. Because you have a boundary problem. That's my microphone. It's really just a pin, but okay. All right. Um, by the way, you like my dashiki? I know it's not really a dashiki, but I like the word dashiki. Um, okay. No, wait. Let me get nerd. Let me go full nerd on you here. Got my, my glasses. I'm going to five. Seven going to five. Okay. Uh, no offense to fives out there. We love you, and we're very grateful that you teach us all how to have good boundaries. Okay. Difficulty establishing boundaries. You may notice you have difficulty saying no. Look at that. You have difficulty saying no. Do you have difficulty saying no? No, I don't have difficulty saying no. Yeah, you can say no to me, right? You have difficulty saying no to people when they want you to do something for them. That's why a lot of <clears throat> a lot of nine wing one females are like, oh, I'm a two. Because I never tell anybody no and I always do everything for them. Yeah, but you're not a two. Uh, you're not motivated for the same reason. You know, a two finds the sense of worth and value and identity in serving others and taking care of them. You just don't want people to be mad at you. Called you out. You just don't want people to be upset with you. And here's another kind of hard thing to hear is sort of like the underlying assumption of the nine is, well, their lives matter. So I should probably just do what they want to do and take care of them because after all, you know, their lives matter. I, me, I'm just a little brown mouse. And, you know, that's nice. It's, it's nice that you're humble and self-effacing. It's one of the reasons people like you and they like being around you. But you're not just a little brown mouse, okay? You have a right to own your life. You have a right to be a person. Say it with me. I'm a person. You have a right to own your schedule, to own your time, to own your space, to own your closet. And if somebody says, hey, I'm gonna take this shirt, you can say, uh, yeah, no, not, sorry. I don't want you to take my shirt, that's my shirt. Ooh, that sounds, they might be upset with me. Well, okay, but look at what happens. You get upset with them, silently resenting them and then withdrawing from them. And you just withdraw from people. You blacklist people and you withdraw from them because you don't want to be bothered by them. And so what happens sometimes is when you don't have a good fence, you put up a wall. And a lot of nines have a lot of walls around people that they just decided, I can't be around that person. Is it you can't be around them or you, you need to be, uh, have better boundaries in order to be around them? And I don't know how to work on boundaries or I don't know how to develop boundaries and boundaries feels mean, it feels harsh. So I'll just won't be around that person anymore. I'll just move to the other side of the country. I'll just move to the other side of the office. I'll just get another job because I can't be around this person anymore because they're difficult. Okay, there's a lot of difficult people out there and you get along with people better than anybody else. But there's going to be some people that in order to get along with them, you're going to have to look them in the face and say, I'm sorry, no thank you. Can't help you with that. Thanks. I know, I have a hard time with this too. 
Sevens, you know, we're nice guys and we don't want to tell people no. We want everybody to be happy and okay. All right, but somebody's got to take responsibility for your happiness. Look, you have no line to seven, but let me just tell you from a sevens perspective, okay? When you get to some place in your life and you realize I'm not happy, just recognize that may have never been your goal. So let's make it a goal. Let's make it a goal. Like, what would I do right now to bring some more happiness in my life? What would I do to bring some more joy in my life? Listen to the seven. Listen to the wisdom of the seven. What could you do right now to bring some joy in your life? And then don't forget your own nine voice of, what would I do right now to bring some more peace and harmony into my life? If you're gonna have peace and harmony in your life, you have to tell people no. Okay. If you're going to have peace and harmony in your life, it's going to require you to say no to people. You can't say yes to everybody else's agenda and then hope to have peace and harmony in your life. Doesn't work that way. You can say yes to a lot of people, but there's going to be some people. There's always gonna be this percentage of people who are out for themselves. They don't care about you, they don't care about your life, or at least in that moment, they don't care about your agenda. They might be good people, but they, 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 they're focused, over-focused on what they want and what they want you to do for them. You don't have to say yes. You don't have, you can look right at mom and you can say, mom, I love you, I really do, but I'm not gonna take that job in Uncle Billy's auto parts store. I'm not gonna do it, that's not what I wanna do with my life. But she'll be upset, she'll be hurt. Well, those feelings belong to her. Let those feelings be in her. Be sensitive to those feelings, but you're not responsible. You didn't create those feelings in her. You're not a bad person. See that one wing? I gotta do the right thing. Six, they'll be upset with me. One, I gotta do the right thing. Six, they'll be upset with me. I get it, but listen to eight and three. I have a right to own my life. What's my goals? Listen to those, listen to that advice too. Don't just listen to one and six. Listen to eight and three as well. Okay. Uh, this may be another way you put others before yourself and over adapt to what others want. Again, their lives matter. Their lives are important. Notice if you have a hard time going against people, uh, going against what people want. You know, I mean, the old, you know, routine of where do you guys want to eat tonight in the nine? Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, um, that's good, again, that's why everybody likes being around you, but um, just notice if you have a hard time going against what other people want and other people's agenda, other, and hard, hard time speaking up when you don't agree, trouble setting limits, a difficult time seeing your need for boundaries and establishing them in your relationships with others. Okay, um, so I think that brings us to the end of this session. And uh, the next one, we're going to talk about the desire to avoid conflict and avoid disharmony uh, and then avoiding discomfort. So more videos to come. All right, guys. Thank you. And as always, be present to life. And if you're going to be present to life, sometimes life requires you to say, mm, no, thank you. Thanks, but no. Hey, I really appreciate you thinking of me, but I'm not going to be able to help you out this time. I'm sorry, but thank you for understanding. All right, I'll see you next time, guys.